Yo, Havoc Nation has arrived. Welcome to Pause and Rewind, because that's just what we do here. Listen, the ones who live, we are here with episode four. I, I, I'm excited to jump into it, man. Episode three was a phenomenal episode. They've all been bangers, honestly. 10 out of 10s for me. Uh, but the last one, man, hey, that was like fundamental master class 101 of, of, of how to say nothing but say everything at the same time. And I'm speaking on Denai Guerrero's performance uh, in that because she didn't have a ton of dialogue, but she said the most, if that makes any sense. You know what I'm saying? I remember everything about her character, her performance uh, as an actor and everything like that during that episode more than anything. So that was really, really phenomenal. Um, and so here we are with episode four and it's going to be interesting, man. Are we going to get out of the CRM? What What's going on? Or if I was Okafor. The CRM. <laughs> I miss that dude. But anyways, we're going to jump into episode four, man. Havoc Nation, are you ready? Let's go. We'll be back. They jumped out of a damn helicopter. Oh, my goodness. Look how she looking at him. Where the hell did they land? They did not jump out of a helicopter. <laughs> what is going on? Oh, wow. Whose house is this? In the ocean, Michonne. Hey, that's best case scenario, but damn. Welcome home. Huh? Who, 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 uh, whose house is this? <laughs> Does she go again, yo? Saying so much, but not saying nothing. We needed a timeout. Oh. I can't believe you. <laughs> Facts. Rick, don't forget. She said we needed a time out. Next time I hear somebody tell me we need a time out, I'm running. They looking mighty comfortable. This is a clearly well lived in home. They're not worried about nothing. Hey, get your peek on my guy. You don't miss that? You don't miss that? Oh, I thought so. <laughs> <laughs> huh? Dang, I remember that. Look at that. You seeing all that history right there. All the stuff that they didn't went through together. <laughs> That's funny, man. It's been a long time, bro. Your kids didn't grew up. I know what they do. You want to call them here? Written by Denai Guerrero. Let's go. Oh, these eyes in these episodes, Rick. Hey, Rick, you in your place right now, bro. This was one of my faves growing up. This little girl listening to her own rhythm, free spirited, just like Judas. Ah, I loved her so much. I thought I was meant to be a writer for a while there. Aha. Uh -huh. Considering she wrote this episode. You've become a bit of a creative writer these days. That note Ooh. in the getaway boat. Ooh. Poetry. Ooh. <laughs> oh, here. Rick, you got to stand back about 12 yards. Another masterpiece for your children. Because I'm not going to be the one to you tell them children. that I found their father. There sent me away and chose not to come home to them uh-oh children children oh she sucked our teeth children rick stand back his name is rick we call him rj oh you got a little mini me bro I was pregnant when the bridge happened he's almost eight damn Leaving, you were alive, and you were. You, you think I didn't want to want to be with you? 
I tried, I tried everything. Oh my goodness. We need to go back. Your preferred temperature will be reached. Where is that thing? I told you not to show them who you are. And you break the kill record. I knew it. I knew she was going to break a record. It isn't you. You think, you think I want this? Your preferred temperature has been reached. Man, this is heavy right here. This is needed though, right? This is really important. They gotta, they gotta talk about this. They ain't have no time before. She was running away from Alexandria. She saw me half dead at the riverbank. She will destroy our home if I try to leave. I was making her let you go. I got that much out of her. You want me to go? No, girl, not really. I'm just saying. Right, I just, I just, I just need you to stay alive. She's threatened by us because she Together, you and me, she thinks we could do anything. And guess what? We can. Should have done that in the beginning. She left it all behind. Who we are, where we're from. So people will find us if we did that. Mm. She covered all her bases, man. Please, just give me the PRB. To leave that note and think I would just leave? Me? Both of us couldn't go home. Would you have gone if I told you? No. No. We go back. We find her evidence, we destroy it, we kill her. Damn. And then we go home. Sounds like a plan. <laughs> Easy peasy. <laughs> oh my goodness. Do you think we can do anything? Listen, he's been here so long. He's, he's scared, man. It's, it's, it's like impossible to get out of here. Even though y'all standing in the middle of an Airbnb. We need to go back. And after that? Yeah, what's the plan, Rick? Do you still love me? Oh, no. Whew. I've never stopped loving you. Girl, he cut off his hand trying to get out of there. You know what I'm saying? He would, he would survive a jigsaw trap. Like, he love you, girl. <laughs> he love you. That's our helicopter. Damn! Well, that's gonna make a scene. So we're gone. Yeah. We can go home. Mm. What did you say? I'm not going home. Twelve yards. Step back, boy. Twelve yards. Oh Lord! What the hell? They got him in a chokehold, man. I, he, I don't think Rick believes at all that he can escape these people, man. You know, your son, the one you haven't asked anything about. Damn. Oh, damn. He and Judith tell each other the story of what you did. He started calling himself Little Brave Man. Look at this view, though. Damn. I found you, I, but I didn't. Right. Kind of. This is not what I had in my head at all. Okay. That's, that makes the biggest disappointment, right? When you already have something in your head and then it don't go how you thought. He wanted me to become a part of the CRM, move up, help him change it. I didn't have anything left, so I gave myself to his mission. His mission. Do you remember the life we built? Mm. What we had? What we were building? It's kept people alive. Uh, uh, man, you got to go through all that history again, Rick, so you can remember all that. <clears throat> Slowly forgetting a little bit. You have a family. Okafor's gone. Thorne's one of them. Now I'm the only one left. Rick, damn. You're trying to uh, keep us safe by maybe changing the CRM one day. Who might? <laughs> Look at his face. Oh, man. I don't want to do this. I have to. So, no. Oh! Oh, my gosh. He is doubling. Oh, damn. I I won't put nothing past her. I thought she pulled a gun. I'm like, where'd she get that from? And now I have to go. You're lying. You'll see it. And it'll be too late. Oh. Oh, gosh. What, what a disappointment. There's no way she can't, like, burst out into tears, man, because that's terribly sad. There's so much fight, effort, and everything to get to find each other. 
See, here it is. This is the, the breakdown right here. Like, this is crazy. And Rick don't come out after her, don't open that door or nothing. See, this is the breakdown. This is disappointing. On both sides. Like, we know what Rick is doing. Like, we get it. He's scared to death because he has seen years and years and years of what the CRM can actually do. Michonne has only seen two seconds of it. So Rick is trying to keep the people he loves at a distance from all of this nonsense. He feels like the only way he can do that is by staying here. But sure, you're Michonne and trekked across the earth, fought everybody to get here, never gave up, finally found him, and he tells you no. <clears throat> Damn. Y'all still ain't tell me whose house this was. Uh oh, it's another helicopter. See? Look how fast they got here. What are you, what what are y'all gonna do? Where are y'all? Michonne. You don't hear that copter outside? They can see the helicopter in the other building, the crashed one. Damn, they blew it up just to make sure or what? Or are they just getting rid of evidence? What was that for? Oh, man. Sean, I think you needed to. Damn, you dropped the stick and the knife? That leads us further into dead mass. This way. Come on. Yo, this is crazy. <laughs> Coming to your senses a little bit, maybe? Do that, we get trapped. We can't breach from this high up, even if it's a defensible position. I don't even have a weapon, Commando. <laughs> Goddamn defensible position. Commando. See, she's really? just talking like a soldier. She's like, who the hell are you? Defensible position. Listen, they didn't taught Rick some skills, man. You're gonna need them skills. You can't be mad at that. Yeah, y'all gotta get out of this, this building made of Legos right now. Progress and redemption through innovation is now like a sick joke to me. Mm. Cannot go another day, continue to watch our mission die. I am sorry. Let me be remembered as one who refused to leave the world the same way I found it. Damn, he electrocuted himself. Is that what he did? Yeah, it looks like it. The thing on the head. That I would give everything, my my hand, my life for you. That's not me. Whoa. This is what I need to do to keep you safe. The only time I feel safe is when I'm with you. What you gonna say about that, Rick? What you gonna say about that? So that's what I tell your son, that his father didn't want to know anything about him because he was so afraid. I'm not the brave man. Oh. You shouldn't have come. Oh, no. Oh, Lord. Rick. Oh. You don't know a goddamn thing anymore, do you? He's two seconds away from killing this man. This is who you are now. Damn. Big guy, huh? Soldier of the CRM. Oof. You're moving up, right? That's the plan? Maybe. I should be afraid of you mm. in the red uniforms. I don't know what you're capable of. Mm. You lie to me. You keep lying. Mm. 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 Then I'm not wondering how I will ever live with myself if God forbid. Right. Right. That's why you should go. Wow, he is standing ten toes. I don't know who you are because the man I knew would never talk to me like that. Rick, I mean, you are a different person, but how could he not be? He's been in the CRM in the Civic Republic this whole time. That's how they brainwash people, man. Hey, they put you somewhere long enough. You know, you engage in something on a daily basis. Those things become your new ideals. 
they put fear into you things like that it, how do you it's hard to break that i get it but <clears throat> as soon as michonne showed up that shit should have went out the window but he's scared he's literally scared i don't blame him the crm has made good on all of their promises how do you compete with that <clears throat> damn you gotta work with somebody you don't even like right now <laughs> I had this. I had this. <laughs> really? <laughs> yo, what is going on, yo? He says, sorry, yo. This is an interesting way to fight while killing walkers. To hug the wall. This is wild. What? <laughs> this is wild, man. <laughs> Oh no. I can didn't, didn't stab her, right? One, two, three. Oh no. Oh no, that's too close. There's no time. You've got to go. These bolts are holding this thing together. What you what Rick, what? Oh my goodness. Oh, this is a task right here. This is crazy. Oh, man. Oh, no. Ah! She has to do this from a stuck, seated position. This is crazy. Thanks, Rick. About 30 seconds too late. But thank you. Oh, my gosh. That's too many. What are y'all going to do? It's you gotta go. That is never happening. Oh yeah? I'm gonna hold you to that. Just need to hear that. Yep, exactly what I tell you. Ah, <laughs> uh, your legs gotta be hurting though, man. Lucky nothing on there like penetrated her leg, man, because then they'd really be effed up. Way out. Back to the room. Damn. Buckle again. Man, y'all got the Airbnb VIP access pass. Temperature control malfunction. <laughs> yes. Rick, what's up? I guess I forgive you. <laughs> they got my man rewired, man. They got my man rewired. This this would never work, man, if if he didn't have like a machine, right? You need somebody who's just as strong as you if not stronger to be patient withstand all this bs these comments even though they hurt you know they some bs just to you know like stick around stick beside you like i'm not leaving without you like it, it would take a machine to to get to this type he of looks like me. reasoning with rick so he's really good looking now he's asking about his son you see let's go it's nuts how much she looks like you. Save the light brown skin. It's hard to tell I had anything to do with it. <laughs> and he's stubborn. Just like his daddy, yes. Like his mama. <laughs> he does have your good kind of heart, though. Listen, if he get out, out this bed and say some stupid shit, we got to fight, Rick. We got to fight. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, that's what you, that's what happens when you pick the most expensive Airbnb, my guy. Something has to burn to bring it back. What? If I could change the CRM, there's a chance for future generations, a real chance. And that's true. It's true. I feel like you have a lot more enemies, though. This mark on your back. Yeah. 
was the woman that I led into Alexandria. College buddy. Well, you knew her? Thought I did. There was no body, no trace. I couldn't stop believing you were still out there and needing help, needing me. Everyone thought I was crazy. Of course. Did this to me and Daryl. We stopped her. I don't want to go into how. You killed her? Yes. Good. <laughs> I stopped looking for you. I had to take care of the baby. Take care of Judith. Rick, man, you missed out on a lot, man. That you are not gone forever. I still believe that. You did this to get away? Yes, girl. I love you. Even through the bullshit, you have the button. You could have hit it, Rick. That's true, Rick. You say you can't go home, but I don't think you can go back. I have no idea what's going to happen. I don't know where this is going. This is much needed, though. Aw, oh, damn. Now this side is, is buckling. Running out of time. What's no. the... Show them. Huh? We need to decide what's next. Exactly. That's why I said. What's the plan? Don't play with me. We're not moving Ooh. until we decide. <laughs> It's not time to go. Not until we know where we're going. Rick, boy, she would let all this rubble fall on you. You better sit down. Look at her. She ain't even flinching. After I left here, why did you come after me? You know why. Say it. No. Oh. It was the love of my life. It's not that easy. Listen to me. When this army attacked my friends. Look at him. They've taken so much from us. Damn. Why give them any more? That's a great question. We, your family, are real. I'm real. Our love? This? It doesn't get denied. Facts. Facts. It's hurting me, Rick. Mm. It's making me become someone I don't recognize. You're hurting me. Oh. And I know you. That is not how you love. Nope. You don't want to do that. What did they do to you? I need you to try to tell me what is really going on. Damn, they broke Rick Grimes. They broke Rick Grimes. When I got taken, I fought and I fought. Not just by trying to get away, but by, by how I would dream. I'd meet up with Carl in my dreams. Oh my gosh. Y'all really going to do this to us? I survived in here. Dad, look how little he was, man. And then one day he was just gone. He just left. But then I started dreaming of you. Mm-hmm. These were great, too. I couldn't see your face anymore, just like I couldn't see Carl. I can't live without you. Without you, I die. Mm. You can't just come back here, make me come alive again. If I don't know if I won't lose you again what if i lose you and i can't figure out how to die all over again i can't oh my oh my <laughs> see this is why you need a strong woman with you right there so that when you're at this type of point you can do this you know what i'm saying you can have this breakdown because she's strong enough to to carry that for just a little brief time that you need it i won't survive that with you. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, my gosh. I came here through the hell that we have both been through. Mm -hmm. We love on each other as hard as we can while we can. This is truly great writing. It's very gripping. Very nice, man. Man. Trying to slowly, slowly get Rip out, get Rick out of that, man. Trying to break him out. Because my man is stuck right now, man. He's having a hard time. A lot of internal battles. Elevator has 10 minutes left of reserve power. This place is stacked, man. I got all the good shit up in here. 
Wow. Look at this. Oh, did he take the, uh... Just put a sweater on. I couldn't tell if he took the uniform off. Look at these two together. Ooh! <laughs> y'all sexy! Look at y'all! All right, how long it take to get to the ground floor? Oh, there we go. So I wonder what the CRM thinks, man. Do they think they're dead? Do they believe it? Or are they gonna go looking for them? It's a thick shift. <laughs> Clearly, they thought they could do anything. Yep, we can. We can make this whole damn world. Look at him. Oh, yeah, is that true, Rick? Rick, look right <laughs> Yeah, Rick, where are you? He ready to go on vacation now? You ready to go? You ready to book your ticket? <laughs> it's about time. Only Michonne could have got that out of him. Only Michonne. Only Michonne. Damn, old building came down by Airbnb. That place was nice. Wow. Wow. All right. Deny. Deny with the writing right there, right? Leave it to her to bring in some much needed dialogue and uh, great discussions that was a necessity to, I think, to this story, right? It's been fast paced, it's been chaos, it's been turmoil, it's been struggle, but there hasn't been any resolve, right? There hasn't been any like, you know, making that connection. We're just passing by each other, you know, passing notes, leaving you a note, me not showing up, trying to get you to go, us talking and passing in secret, you know, blah, blah, blah. There hasn't been that connection yet. Even when they first refound each other, he had to pull a gun on her. You know what I mean? So there just hasn't been what this episode gave us, you know, which I don't think you can continue the rest of this series without having that. Um, so the fact that this was written by Deny, it, it just showcases a lot here, a lot of layers to this story, a lot of layers to these characters that we've known since the beginning, but that still have an arc. Like they still have an arc all these years later, you know, you're getting so many uh, more layers to, to these characters that, that we're already familiar with. So that's also really, really cool. This was again, well needed, you know, Rick finally kind of opening up, you know, saying that he was surviving with, you know, just with those pictures on the phone. And, you know, he went, the, 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 the picture guy, he told us, right that Carl was the, the one that he was trying to draw, but he could never get the picture right and whatever and stuff like that. Then Michonne gets it, you know, and, and is able to kind of give that to Rick and he's remembering Carl. So he used to dream about Carl and that kept him going. He used to dream about Michonne, which we saw those dreams, right? Wanted to show up with the five boxes of pizza. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, that kept him going. But then he stopped dreaming, right? And so what happens? over time you start forgetting what the people you love look like you don't have a picture you don't have a dream you don't have a memory like that stuff starts fading that's just how time works and and what you think you remember isn't quite it which is why you could you know maybe uh you know go to a picture guy and try to describe you know and then he draws it and you're like ah, that doesn't look like him yeah, because you're not getting the details right. You're not, you know, you're kind of, you know, uh, misremembering a little bit, you know, because so much time has passed and you're not seeing any faces, you know. Um, you know, he threw his stuff in the fire and then he stopped dreaming. So he's got nothing to go on but his memories. And over time, even your memories change a little bit and shift a little bit. and Things don't quite look like what you really remember them looking like. So 
that's tough for Rip. If that's what's been keeping you going, that was your gasoline, that was your fuel, and that died out, you reached the point where you got broken and you didn't know how to get out of that. And it took somebody who knew you this well to, to help you get there, to help you kind of break out of that, to help you feel again, help you remember again, him remembering Carl. Oh my gosh, you know, we got to see little Carl in the flashback. We got to see big Carl. We literally watched Carl grow up on this show. So that was a very, very touching moment um, just to see that. The use of flashbacks in this have been really good. Um, that was the best one so far. Like just, just inserting a couple of those shots. It wasn't overkill. They didn't show us like a whole scene, although they could have, but they didn't. And it worked, I, I think, very well, especially to kind of convey that Rick wasn't remembering much. You know, he was losing a lot of what he had actually been through, you know. And so Michonne just kind of telling her stories and him asking about the scar on her back and her telling him about the history of, of things that have happened that he's kind of forgetting that you have to remember because we've been through so much like, I need you to remember because remembering those things is what keeps you moving in this direction. The fact that you're moving in this other direction means you have kind of forgotten those things. Um, and so I think this was a really pivotal moment, a key moment for the both of them, obviously. Kind of get on the, the same page. Shout out to uh, Michonne as a character for being that patient. Hey, that's what it would take. <laughs> because there's a lot of people who are in similar situations where it's like you're just everything you're doing is saying you're not getting through, right? You're not getting through, you're not getting through. But the patience that she's had, she got mad, she got angry, she got upset, she got sad, she got whatever. But no matter what happened, she was still there. She didn't let him go. It, it, it took a lot more fight to, to reach him. That's all. And then she finally did. And when you got that kind of patience, the, the payoff and the reward is, 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 is so worth it at the end, you know? And now it looks like she got her man back. And then at the end, he's sitting in the car talking about, man, we could take over this whole world if we want to. She was looking at him like, what the fuck? Who is this? I thought other, uh, just the other day you was talking about some, yes, man, position three, five X. Like, now you talk about conquering the world with me? All right. That's, that's the person I remember. That's who I was trying to get back to, and that's who I was looking for. So very, very great episode. Um, awesome, awesome writing. I love the fact that this series has allowed Andrew Lincoln and Denai Guerrero to be creators in this. They didn't just show up as actors. When you've had this much years of experience playing the same character that's usually a good time to be involved in future development you know in the development and the continuation of that story because sure you got writers and other people who have created these characters but at the end of the day after playing them that long nobody knows these characters better than you as the actor because you're literally playing them. Sometimes people don't even turn their character off even when the cameras go off, right? So, like, you know that character inside and out. So, to allow them to be creators of this, of this series um, and also be writers, it really says a lot. Um, one, the trust factor, but two, of how much, like, how, how deep they've gone into these characters as actors. Like, they know them inside and out, which is why you could end up writing something like this. Um, like, you're not a showrunner. You still wrote an episode that seems like it came from a lot of the writers and showrunners that we've been, been used to seeing and Scott and those guys. So um, <clears throat> I, I just think it was a phenomenal episode. Really great writing. Again, strong dialogue. There's been strong dialogue in all of the episodes, um, which I really, really love. Um, I, I just have no complaints, man. This is a solid episode. And again, I'm just so happy to see these two as actors. I think uh, in an interview, um, Denai and Andrew were talking about kind of their involvement in the show and, and how much 
Andrew actually has had to take Denai's direction in a lot of this. So a lot of this writing and a lot of ideas I know have come from Denai. Um, again, I just think it's a smart choice that they've been given that freedom to be involved in this kind of way because I think we're getting layers to these characters that we haven't really got before. We might have seen glimpses of here and there, but to get it in this essence and in this environment, this kind of uh, Walking Dead world here is, is, has been really great. So, yeah, I love this episode. I'm not going to watch any spoilers for the next episode. I like going in blind. So y'all let me know what y'all thought about this one, man. I, I really love this episode. Again, I think it was much needed. Incredible performance by Andrew Lincoln. Incredible performance by Denai. Everybody killed it. And it was just them two on screen the entire episode. There were no other actors. There were no other characters. All we saw were walkers, which, again, I also love, right? The Walking Dead as a world, as a universe, there's a lot of like human against human stuff. You know, some people don't like that. Some people think it's too much. Some people, I personally don't mind it. It's good entertainment. And I think it's also realistic, to be honest. But, you know, sometimes to be able to get back to the essence of The Walking Dead and it being about trying to survive the apocalypse and trying to survive these walkers and stuff like that. This series has done a really good job at that as well, because this episode, for example, it was just about surviving the walkers and trying to figure out how to get a plan to get away from, you know, uh, you know, this city and these people and this and that. But throughout the whole episode, they're trying to fight the walking dead. And that is the show. Right. And so sometimes we do lose that element of the walking dead in the walking dead. So that was also refreshing for me and has been one of those things in this series. You know, even the last uh, episode, <clears throat> Michonne pushing the the uh, ball thing uh, through through the walkers and setting the traps and igniting and disruption bombs and everything has been about walkers. Um, so, again, that's kind of a reignition for me as far as the Walking Dead universe is concerned, where there's a lot of stuff about surviving the walkers which has been really really good um I, it allows for a lot of some of those other human human elements like this episode there's a lot of emotion a lot of rawness to it um that you kind of get to exude on camera when you're not throwing in all of those other elements that we're used to seeing through all of the the walking dead shows so again solid series easily i mean by far it's not even close this is the best series of any of the spinoffs so far um and i like them i love daryl dixon i loved fear for for you know a good section of seasons um you know a lot of great characters in that series as well and stuff like that but th this one here is i just don't think anything is competing with this even outside of the walking dead universe just overall as a series especially a limited series or six episode kind of thing this one is 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 unmatched right now it is really good where every single episode is a 10 out of 10 like they're not missing anything right now um so i cannot wait for the next episode i'm absolutely loving this uh this series hopefully you guys are too leave some comments let me know what y'all thought about this episode and what do you think if you don't know anything what do you think is going to happen next? Does the CRM think they're dead? Is Jadis going to believe that they crashed after having all those conversations with Rick? Is she going to go after them? Is she going to release the file? Is she going to try to find their home? Like, what is going to happen? We obviously know this can't be no easy getaway, right? So, all right. I'm a little nervous as to what's to come, but... I cannot wait to check it out. I'll see y'all next week for some more The Ones Who Live. Having Nation, be easy. Yeah.